I'm Sharon Bill, welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'll lead you step by step through the ABRSM Theory grades. We're progressing nicely through the Grade 4 past papers from the year of 2016. There are lots of resources to, available to help you on my website. If you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets. They're available in US letter or A4 to accompany each step of this series. There's also a page with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also find information about the books that I have available. I've written How to Take Your ABRSM Music Theory Exam. It's full of tips and techniques on how to best prepare for your exam and also how to best make use of the time when you're actually in the exam room and taking the exam paper. So if you go to SharonBill.com it's all there for you. If you can give me a like, that would be great, and subscribe to my channel to keep updated. There's lots more in store. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am. And so let's press on with the next question. So if you turn with me to page 16 in your work booklet, notice that we've missed the rhythms because they are no longer part of this paper. And we're cracking straight on to question three. So I'm hoping you've had a go. If not, just press pause or stop and come back to me when you've had a go. It's much better to learn that way by your mistakes. It doesn't matter if you go wrong. We're only ever writing in pencil. Have a nice sharp pencil and eraser and a ruler to hand. You need to keep your answers neat and tidy, otherwise you risk losing some marks. And so now let's crack on with question three. Again... All of the questions on this page refer to this little extract of music here. Now these uh, performance directions, uh, we'll go ahead and answer them as they're presented in this paper because it's good revision to do so, but in the new format paper these will be presented to you as multiple choice. So, it asks us to give the meaning of allegretto. Well, allegro means fast. Or quick allegretto means fairly quick there we go con moto there are two words so we need to make sure that we explain both of those so con is with that's just a linking word so if you're revising these in groups that would be in a linking word section the way I would organize that and then moto means motion or movement or you could say motion, either one of those will describe the same thing. Leggero means lightly, or I suppose you could say nimble, that's another kind of descriptive word there. Okay, let's have a look at the next question. How many demi semiquavers or 30 second notes are the tied notes in bars 4 to 5 worth? So we're looking at these tied notes here. So <clears throat> we've got a dotted crotchet or a dotted quarter note and a quarter note. So let's just break this down. Let's see how many there are in a crotchet or a quarter note to begin with. So we know it divides these into two um, quavers or eighth notes. It divides again into four semi-quavers or sixteenth notes and so it divides again into eight thirty-second notes or demi-semi-quavers so we know that one crotchet, one quarter note is eight thirty-second notes so let's look what we've got here, we've got a crotchet and a crotchet so we've got two quarter notes, two crotchets, so that's eight plus eight, oh dear got a bit carried away there and then <clears throat> we've got a dot after it, which makes this half as long again. So we've got another four here. So we've just got to do a little bit of maths here. So 8 plus 8 is 16, plus 4 is 20. And so that's the answer. We've got 20 demi semis or 30 second notes. There we go. Let's go to the next one. Add the correct rest or rests at the place marked with a little asterisk at bar 3, to complete bar 3, so here now we need to reflect the time signature, we're in 12-8 so we've got 
groups of three, we've got four groups of dotted crotchets, dotted quarter notes. So we've got one group of three here, two groups of three. Now here we're going to have to watch out because we've got this group of three to finish and this group of three to begin. And so first of all we need to finish this group of three and so we've got one, two, three quaver beats. We're counting an eighth note of quaver beats. So one, two, three. And now we've got to complete this group of three. And so we can have the crotchet rest. One, two, three. It would be incorrect if you were to do a dotted crotchet beat because really that needs to be split between those groups. Just like beaming, your rests must show the start of each new beat. So we need to reflect that dotted crotchet, dotted quarter note beat. And so we'd have to finish this group first before we continue and start this group here. So there we go. Next one, give the technical names. So we're looking at words like tonic and dominant of the two notes in bar one marked with an X and a Y. Now they've done the main bit of thinking for us, they've told us that the key is F minor. So we need to find the intervals of these notes here and then give them their technical name. So if F is number one, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's the sixth degree of the scale. And the technical name for that, if you remember, is submediant. There we go. Put a gap there, and there isn't really, it's all one word. Just shunt that up, there we go. And then looking at the next one, now there's a clue that tells us straight away we've got a, an accidental. So I'm guessing that will be the raised seventh. However, just to be sure, this is note E. If F is note 8 or 1, E is 7th, so you could, we are right in thinking that's the raised 7th and so that will be the leading note. There we go, that's that done then. Which other key signature has the same key signature Oh, have, which other key has the same key signature as F minor? So we know that F minor is related to A flat major. I always find it helpful before you start, uh, and I would do this in the exam, just write out your circle of fifths. There's the link in the video, in the description below. Um, and I would always write out your key signatures and related keys first, and then you've done all the thinking once you don't need to keep racking your brains and thinking of it again. Okay, last little bit here. Rewrite bar two in simple time, but without changing the rhythmic effect. So we're going to begin from compound time to simple time, which we get, means we're going from groups of three quaver beats or eighth notes to groups of two. Now at the moment this is four groups of three and so we need to go to four groups of two and so the time signature will be four, four here. And then remember we need to squish from a group of three to a group of two and we do that by adding a triplet or removing a dot and it's as simple as that then. So bar two we're going to copy this bit out and then we'll just restrict the timing into groups of two. So I'll just copy this out now and then we'll think about how to address the timing issues. So we just need to get the blobs in place. So we can't, re we can't rewrite it, we can't change the way it sounds, we can't recompose it. So at the moment that's still in groups of three. You can see that still looks like it's in compound time and so we simply shrink that into groups of two by adding 
the triplet sign that we can't remove that dot that's part of the group of three just got a bit carried away and then so here one two three just have to bracket that to show that that's also been um, constricted by a triplet let's look at the next page so this is slightly relating to this extract of music however it's sort of in a bit more of an abstract general sense and so now it's asking us some orchestral information name the lowest sounding member of the standard orchestral string family the lowest of them all is the double bass the highest sounding member of the standard orchestral woodwind or brass families um, is piccolo you could perhaps also say flute, but piccolo is the absolute highest. Getting a bit carried away there. And for the brass, it's the trumpet. So is this correct, this statement? The viola normally uses the alto clef. Yeah, that is correct. So, true. And then... Underline one instrument from the list below that produces sounds of indefinite pitch. So indefinite pitch is kind of an untuned. So bassoon is definitely tuned. You can play pitch. Cymbals is the answer because there's no, you couldn't play a tune on that. It's untuned percussion. So there's the answer to that one. I'll use a ruler. We'll just double check. Tuba. That's a um, pitch instrument, horn, that's a pitch instrument. When it says indefinite pitch, it's usually going to be relating to untuned percussion. Just another way of saying the same thing, indefinite pitch or untuned. Here we go then. Let's have a go at this next question. So it asks us to add the correct clef, so that's part one. And any necessary accidentals. Part two, to make these the, the scale of G-sharp harmonic minor, it says do not use a key signature. We still need to bear a key signature in mind, but first of all, let's deal with the clef. So um, G-sharp harmonic minor must begin and end on a G-sharp, and so that must be treble clef, otherwise it wouldn't be correct. If it was bass clef, it would be a B, so that wouldn't be appropriate. Now G-sharp harmonic minor... Is related to B major and if you've already worked out your list your circle of fifths you've already done that thinking already I would do that right at the very start best think about it once and then you can just keep referring back to it so we know it's got a key signature of F C G D A sharp so that's our related key so let's do that first of all let's take it a step at a time so F sharps G sharps, of course, occur twice because we begin and end on that. It looks like we're writing too many sharps, but we've got the key note twice. Oh, I'm going out of order. C sharps. So F, C, G, D sharps and A sharps. Okay, but we're not quite there yet because the harmonic minor has to have the raised seventh. So because we're descending, it's eight, seven. Be careful you don't make the mistake again. One, two, three, because it's not, it's eight, seven, six, because we're descending. So the sharp, we can now just rub out. It's best to do that and just follow the steps, though. And to raise a sharp, it becomes a double sharp. So that's that done. So just take it a step at a time, and it's more than manageable. So now, write the key signature of E flat major. They've given us the clef. And then one octave ascending, so we're going up. And that's the use semi briefs, hell notes, so we don't have to worry about stems. And of course, begin on the tonic. So, key signature of E flat major is B flats, E flats, and A flats. Be careful you position that correctly for the bass clef. And so, I'm going to begin on a low E. We know that this is a G, good boys deserve, so G, F, E will require a ledger line. But then, and now I'm not going to run out of space, because I'm ascending. So 
So your lines is base, line, space. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Space that out. They've given you plenty of room. And we've ended on an E. All cows eat grass. That's the little poem. So we know we're correct there. And that's the job done. I do hope that's been helpful to you. We'll finish the next part of the paper in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you can give me a like, that would be fab, and subscribe to my channel. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am. And please do visit SharonBill.com. There's loads there for you. See you next time. Bye.